Hi, I'm Danny Nightmare. I'm Grady Movie. And tonight we are going to see Truth or Dare. It's a Blumhouse horror movie. It's about a game of truth or dare where people die if they don't complete the dares. Yep, and uh, we'll let you know the truth about it when we get done watching it. See you soon. All right, Gory. I dare you to tell the truth about this film. It stinked. It stinks. <laughs> it gave me pretty much what the trailer showed me, though. I mean, I wasn't too surprised that it sucked. So if you've seen the trailer, you pretty much know what it's about. A group of friends is taken to a mission in Mexico where they are on spring break. And they find the guy from Hemlock Grove and he suggests they all play Truth or Dare. And they agree to it, but apparently the game is possessed. So if you get Dare, you have to you have to do it or you die. If you get Truth, you have to do it or you die. And you can't not play or you die. So yeah, the chances of you dying playing this version of Truth or Dare are, are pretty high. And you can pass it on to other people, kind of like it follows, and it takes turns a little bit like Final Destination. But those are better movies? Yeah, um, it, it definitely has much of a Final Destination vibe to it because it goes in the order that they were playing the game in. But yeah, there's parts of it, especially when they meet the guy in Mexico, that have kind of an It Follows vibe to it. So we'll break it down for you. We'll give you the good, the bad, and the gory. Uh, the good thing about this movie is it gave me some laughs. Probably unintentionally, but I chuckled throughout most of it. And I mean, I like the cast. You got the, the kid from uh, Tyler Posey, I think, from Teen Wolf. I do like Teen Wolf. Uh, the gal from Pretty Little Liars, Lucy Hale. I like that guy, Landon, whose last name I can't pronounce, from Hemlock Grove. It's a pretty decent cast. They give good performances for what this movie is. It's a teen horror movie. I thought they did great. In this movie, she better not be a pretty little liar. She's got to tell the truth. Damn straight. <laughs> and, you know, like Danny said, there were lots of parts where I laughed out loud, usually at the expense of the film. But, I mean, for the most part, I had a, a decent time watching it. So, uh, gosh, let's move on to the bad. First off, the writing is horrible. And my biggest problem with this script is that there are so many places where they describe something interesting, like the characters tell you, but you don't get to see it. So you'll find out about a big, you know, exchange between two characters. You'll find out that a secret was told, for instance, but you didn't get to see that secret be told. They jump to the next scene. They're like, oh yeah. Yeah. Told them. And, well, we would have liked to have seen that. And then you'll you'll jump to another scene later on where you're like, but but you kept that in? Yeah, there was a few parts of the movie where they described a more interesting scene that I wish I could have saw instead of the scene that just tells me about the scene that I wish I could have saw. There's a lot of scenes that they describe that, you know, we didn't get to see that would have added some texture and maybe some depth because this is a very shallow pool we are wading in. Any attempts to add depth to these characters fall flat. These characters are very one note you've got your mary sue character who's very sweet and can't do anything wrong you've got her kind of slutty best friend you've got the guy everyone likes i mean they're very kind of cookie cutter and the some of the scenes that got cut out it's like well that could have added something a little deeper to this movie to this character and unfortunately the movie just wants to move on to the next kill and then when we get to that scene where they really tug at your heartstrings i gave no shits yeah, my, my heartstrings didn't get tugged. Yeah, they, like, they tried to. I was like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's like the movie was like, can I tug on your heartstrings? And we're like, hells no. They dare you to care about this film. But, but you probably won't. So you're just gonna die. Anything else? The soundtrack was a bit off. The score, just weird music. It didn't fit. No. <laughs> Almost like TV special music. But Yeah. Rarely did it hit the right mood. I don't, I don't know if that was intentional yeah. or not, but it just, it seemed like it was all over the place. I also think that their attempts at humor were, they, they just didn't feel right. They, it, when it tried to be funny, it was never really funny. Um, the dialogue is pretty bad. It's all very wooden, very choppy. And a lot of cliches, especially oh. the Google search cliche. They even commented on it. Like they know it's a cliche, but just because you know that you're doing it, doesn't make it right to do it. In fact, 
I'd say that makes it worse. And it, they go way, it's not just a simple Google search. There's like four or five Google searches. There's Facebooking, there's Snapchatting. If social media horror is something that annoys you, this is not gonna be your cup of tea. This is gonna annoy you because I can tolerate that to a degree and it was driving me nuts. And every time they need to get anywhere or find out any information, it's always very quickly available to them. Uh, at one point, they were trying to find out information about this cursed game and their friend, a matter of factly says, duh, type in truth or dare Mexico. I'm sorry, if you type that in, you're gonna get like a donkey show or something. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Tijuana, what's supposed to stay there, should yeah, probably yeah. stay there, but now to the internet, it's it's available. You're gonna find a lot of Spring Breaker shame on there. <laughs> But, you know, those are the cliches that are in these type of movies. And, you know, the characters are, like we said, pretty throwaway, pretty one note, but I also just didn't care about them. Even the characters I'm supposed to care about, I, I just, I really didn't care. I wasn't behind really any of them. Just waiting for the next death, which uh, brings us to the gory. This movie is so disappointingly blood-like. Considering how it only seems to care about moving from one kill to the next, it would be rewarding and it would actually be kind of funny like in a guilty pleasure way if the kills were good but they're really not uh it, it, there's some almost kind of prat folly things there's some fights there's some gun violence uh if this movie had the kills that the final destination series had because the final destination series knocks it out of the park with the with the deaths if this movie could do that then i i would be behind it i'd be like well it's it's just a fun movie but it doesn't. The deaths are horribly disappointing. Usually they'll cut to an angle where you don't really see it or it goes into a wall and it's you don't get a good view of any of the stuff that would be good. And don't come here expecting to see this good looking cat's naked because uh, Tyler Posey strips down for a deer right in the beginning, waves his dong around, and Danny and I are the only ones who didn't get to see it. <laughs> it's because we're the only ones in the movie theater, but you know, the, the cat's got to see it. That's just not even fair. If he's gonna wave his dong around, I feel like, you know, the audience should get to see it. There's also a sex scene that's conveniently boobless. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, neutered movie. I guess the best action you get is like, at one point for Madarius, some guy on guy lap dance. It was at least hilarious. <laughs> so what did you think about the demon's face, like when it possesses the kids? Bad CGI. Like she said in the movie, it looks like a bad Snapchat filter. It looks like Jack Black on Tenacious D. It also kind of reminded me of Wayne. You remember on Wayne's World where he'd be like, I am the leprechaun. That's where mostly I got my laughs because it looked so ridiculous. It was kind of funny. You know they were trying to actually be scary with it. Yeah, unfortunately it, it is never scary. There's not even a whole lot of jump scares in it, which I mean, I'm not a big jump scare fan, but usually they add a little bit of fun to it. There's just, it's, it's pretty lackluster. The ones that they had were lame. I don't think it would even work well as a slumber party type movie for teenagers, which is, I think, what this movie should be trying to go for. It just kind of, kind of fell flat. You might have some enjoyment watching this with some friends and drinking beers and making fun of it. I don't know, but I think there's even better movies out there for that. So let's get to our recommendation. Should you see it? No, I'd skip this one. I don't think it's gonna be in theaters much longer, but you're not missing out. Don't rush to it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say you should skip it. There are so many movies that have done this concept to such a better degree. I, I honestly would just say go watch Final Destination. That movie's awesome. I would dare you all to watch it, but I'm not that big of a dick. <laughs> so I gonna truthfully say skip it. All right, so that was our let's see of Truth or Dare. I guess it was good for puns. It was very good for puns. <laughs> Made this video at least fun for puns. And if you do see it, we will tell you, uh, stick around for a small audio stinger. Can't say it's going to be worth waiting through the credits, but it is there if you want to want to hear it. Well, we hope you guys like these Let's See Movie Vlogs. If you want to see more, if there are any upcoming movies that you would like to see us review, let us know in the comments below. And of course, hack that thumbs up button and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Cut! <laughs>